Hey everyone, happy weekend, wherever you are, around the world, I guess I should say. Uh, this will be just a, a short statement about uh, these videos I put up by David Ray, W-R-A-Y. They deal with what people today call astrology, but in the ancient world, it was really astronomy. There was a firm realistic belief on the part of many, many people, all the way to the emperors of Rome and other states persons, that the order of the heavens and the zodiac and the sun and the planetary spheres was a sign of uh, being in place and having meaning and so forth. So even though Gnosticism came along and other forms of Platonic dualism or Neoplatonism, and don't see this as a good place, the universe is still very ordered. It's that canopy of the heavens to which you need to go. So David Ray works on this astrology. You know, I had a teacher at the University of Chicago who used to say there are two differences in our world and the ancient world. Uh, they didn't have electricity. And there you can add internet and everything else. But he, back then it was just, he was talking about electricity. And they believe very, very strongly in a higher meaning being orchestrated by the cosmos. And what the, we call astrology, they called reality. And that's true all the way across the board in the Mediterranean world and really back to the ancient Near Eastern world. So. You could call it superstition, but even Cicero, who writes about superstition, would still have more rational or enlightened views about what we call astrology. So that, that's what uh, David Ray has delved into. Uh, his videos, uh, I just listened to the second one I put up too. They're four all together, very nicely produced. And he's just so knowledgeable. He studied this for years and years, many decades. And the second one, if, if you've wondered about Gnosticism, you know, big G, small G, whatever, I'm telling you, listen to this video. It is crystal clear. Keep in mind when he talks about Jesus, he's talking about the Gnostic Jesus, how they read the text. He's not saying that the historical figure of Jesus was a Gnostic. Now, there are people who think he was, and they love it because they themselves see the world as a dark place. We've fallen into this world below. Remember the quote from Empedocles, I was once a bird, a fish, and now a man. I wept, I wept when I saw this dreadful place. You can kind of feel it in the poetry. And in Greek, it's even more powerful. So there are people that have that. I mean, Christianity is a watered down version of that. What's the purpose of life? To die and go to heaven. What's the question of life? If you were to die tonight, do you know you'd go to heaven? That's not the question of the Hebrew Bible. It's not even the question of most of the New Testament records, not even Paul. And I don't even think the Gospel of John, although many would say it's leaning that way, but certainly not the core sayings of Jesus, which really have to do with the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. Notice the on earth part that people want to leave out. And now today people, oh, that's the social gospel. This is the craziest thing. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven is the social gospel, but the real spiritual gospel is let's worry about where we go when we die. That's what drives religions all over the world. But what made pretty much, uh, certainly the Hebrew Bible, the prophets, and I think, most of the material we get from Jesus different is it had to do with what the rabbis call or what Jews call tikkun haolam, fixing the world. Uh, Daniel 2.44 is the main verse in the entire Hebrew Bible. In the days of these kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom which will never be destroyed. It'll break in pieces all these kingdoms and it'll stand forever. In Isaiah 2, the nations come up and learn peace. Isaiah 11, uh, the wolf lies with the lamb and so forth. It's idealized, of course. There's a lot of symbols there. 
but it's not about the heaven it's not about what heaven will be like it's what the earth will be like and a new earth according to isaiah but if you read it it's not like this world disappears and there's another world so all of that you can get in my lecture that seems to have gotten hundreds thousands of views the bad idea that took over the world and a lot of people watch that and they say well, why why does dr Tabor think this is a bad idea this is the heart and core of religion well from the hebrew uh, or, uh let's say nazarene view rather than christianity because christianity becomes neoplatonist and dualistic from the hebrew view the body is good and the world is good and what's wrong is a utter mismanagement and wreckage of the world through what's called sin in english bad translation but all kinds of missing the mark crossing the bounds and basically messing things up so anyway david ray gives such a clear exposition of these things and shows you how the coins and the iconography and all of the early Christian symbols that develop have to do with astral immortality. I've got right here uh, my book, Paul's Ascent to Paradise. It was my PhD dissertation. I've re-edited it for common consumption. I didn't dumb it down. I just went through it and revised it and made it flow a little better. But Paul says this is the greatest experience of his life. Uh, I think he puts it even above his initial experience of I've seen the Lord. And he sees it as unique and amazing. On the rabbinic side, you've got the four rabbis that ascend into paradise. In this book, I will discuss the Corpus Hermetica, uh, the Mithras liturgy, which is the magical papyri. In fact, I have a chapter on ascent traditions in the Mediterranean world in Western antiquity. And I literally go through every one of them. I don't think I miss any that are certainly major. And Paul is the only first person witness we have to this because most of the ancient literature claims to be Enoch or claims to be somebody ascending to heaven, but it's a literary product. But Paul in 2 Corinthians 10, and that's what my dissertation was about, uh, talks about ascending up into paradise, which is the highest heaven in the Jewish order in most systems some people put it in the third heaven but if you understand the text i go into that thoroughly in the book but back to david ray so david ray there are four of these he starts with jonah and then he talks about orpheus and the gnostic ascent to heaven and what gnosticism is and if you know people always ask, well dr Tabor, all of my students say, what what is gnosticism and now I've got something to play. And, you know, those zodiacs you've seen in the synagogues and in the churches, he gives a good explanation of that. It's not what you think. And, you know, that stone found at Migdal or Magdala, many of you have seen it. Everybody says, oh, that's the temple and it's the motifs of the temple. Remembering the temple. Well, it's actually astrological. And yes, it's the temple, but it's the temple above, which the temple below is a mere reflection of. And there are fish on the top, not two pieces of bread. That's Pisces. So I'm excited about these videos. Uh, check them out. I think you're going to find them incredibly enlightening. And I'll try to get David on as a guest after I give everybody time to watch them. And we'll take a couple hours, just talk to him, let you ask questions. It'll be really amazing. Okay, back to your weekend. But if you have time, put those on as you take a nap or jog or exercise or whatever. Uh, actually, this is so visual, so I think you really have to watch it, but you'll work that out, I'm sure. Take care.